The calendar has flipped to spring, which means it's time to open the 2023 high school spring sports season. And we start with a bang. Tonight, a battle between two of the nation's top 25 programs, Blue Wave of Darien Travel, to take on the Jesuits of Fairfield Prep from Rafferty Stadium on the campus of Fairfield University. Hi, everybody. Join alongside my broadcast partner, Cooper Puff. I'm Braden Shank. So glad you can be with us on this Saturday night. It's the number 11 team in the country, the Darien Blue Wave, against the number 23 ranked team in the, uh, the country, Fairfield Prep, and one is one of the best rivalries around, Cooper. Oh, yes, Braden. This rivalry stems back to the 2020-2021 season when in the Class L SEAC quarterfinal game, the number ranked, the eighth ranked Jesuits took down the number one seeded and heavy favorite to bring home the title, Darian, in a 14-10 victory. And uh, last year they met in last year's state semifinals. It was Darianne getting the best of the Jesuits by the final of 16 to 9. And fast forward 297 days later, they meet in a brand new campaign here in uh, 2023. Um, the result was a 16 to 9 vic uh, victory for Darianne. However, players like Marco Fermender, Tyler Fox, Peter Gandolf, Gandolfo, and Luke Lombardo and Maddox Little bring a lot of experience to this Fairfield prep team and will force Darian to play smart lacrosse. So it's definitely going to be interesting. Darian, they graduated the likes of Matthew Minicus, Ty Comiskey, Joe Caesar. But uh, who are you looking for, Cooper, in 2023 to lead the, way, lead the Waves offense? Uh, my player to watch for Darian this year is recent commit to Notre Dame and number seven ranked recruit in the class of 2024, according to Inside Lacrosse attackman Brady Bacorny. He's been on the team since his freshman year, where he was named All-State second team and All-FCAC first team in 2021, and All-State second team and All-FCAC second team last year. Brady provides a huge spark of offense for the Wave coming off a 58-goal season. Brady is a shifty attackman who can do it all. He's not afraid to take it himself, but his awareness for where he is and his teammates are elevates his game. How about on this Fairfield Prep side? Who are you looking, on, uh, who are you looking for on the Fairfield Prep Jesuits? Well, it's got to be Furmender. Marco Furmender came off a huge year last year with an All-American selection and a 2022 SCC Player of the Year just as a junior. He had 34 goals and 18 assists alongside that. Marco uses his big 6-1 frame to take on his defenders, and with his killer outside shot, shot, Marco isn't afraid to let it fly and make defenders pay for giving him space. Cooper, there's one other thing we got to note here tonight, and that is Darianne's head coach, Jeff Braymeyer. He is starting season number 40 at the helm of Darianne Lacrosse, and uh, he's going to look to make it a memorable one here in his fourth decade of Darianne uh, Lacrosse. Well, Jeff Braymeyer is one of the most decorated high school lacrosse coaches ever. Uh, he has a national championship in 2017. He has 14 state titles and 19 FCAC championships with a record of 650 wins and 143 losses. With a coach with this much experience, it's difficult to ever count Darian out of games. And on the Fairfield Prep side, they have the sixth year former Maryland Terrapin, Graham Niami, leading the Fairfield Prep Jesuits into this season. And uh, what does head coach Niami bring to the Jesuit squad? Graham Niami is a brilliant head coach that previously helped Yale's lacrosse program. His last year there, they were ranked the number one team in the country, and he has done wonders for the Jesuits program as well. In the past three years, he has led his team to two Class L semifinal appearances. Niemi is hoping to change that and bring home the title. The captains just met at the Fairfield F. Now the starters will take the fields in game number one of the 2023 campaign, the 11th ranked Darianne Blue Wave against the 23rd ranked Fairfield Prep Jesuits again in game number one of the 2023 campaign. Someone will start 1-0. Someone will drop to 0-1 on the season. So a lot riding on this one between Fairfield Prep and Darianne. And again, the uh, last time Fairfield Prep played, it was at Rafferty Stadium, and they fell to Darianne. And uh, that was the last game they played again, Cooper. Yeah, it was a tough defeat for Prep that year. Unfortunately, they were not able to make it past the semifinals for the second time in three years. Our goalies will exchange the handshakes and trot out to their respective nets. For Darianne, the Loyola Maryland bound Carter Hagen, the junior will be starting for Darianne and for Fairfield Prep, they will be giving the nod to number 36, the sophomore Matt Berry. For Fairfield Prep, they had the Eastern Connecticut State commit Greg Holinsky, but head coach Naomi gives it to Matt Berry and the Jesuits. All the nerves coming down to this. Ryan Backus for Fairfield Prep at the faceoff X. And he is going to be going up against Darianne's. Jack Silsby. Silsby and Backus. And we are underway in the 2023 boys lacrosse season. Fairfield Prep picking up the ground ball. There's the long stick of Gavin McCarthy. And he'll quickly go on the rush. 
You're watching the DAF Media Network, a joint venture of the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation. Braden Shank, Cooper Puff with you. So glad you can be with us wherever you may be. Fairfield Prep slowing it down. There's the captain, Maddox Little, the Hamilton-bound lacrosse player. One of many commits on this Fairfield Prep team and one of many commits out on the field, Cooper Puff. Yeah, Marco Femender. He's one of them going to UPenn to be a Quaker. What a mascot that is, the UPenn Quakers. Marco Furmender getting it off to Tim Shanahan. Shanahan, the Boston University Terrier in two springs. Number 50 now, Brandon Malahi. Going to take the shot just out of play. Possession staying with the Jesuits. Fairfield Prep in their home whites with the red numbering. They're moving from right to left on your screen. Darian and visiting blacks with the blue numbering from left to right. Shanahan on the restart, being guarded tightly by his defender, Wilson, off the screen. Stepping up to the plate is now number 22, Morgan Rupenstein. Definitely going to take some time to adjust to these new rosters as that's a shot high from Shanahan, staying with the Jesuits. Last year, Christian Allegro wearing the 22, if I'm correct. Yes, that is correct. He, uh, it's a big role to fill for Morgan Rupenstein this year. And that's something that the Darian Jr. will look to do here in game number one. Going to the net, shooting. Stopped by Hagen. Flag has been thrown. And just like that, the first whistle of this afternoon's contest. A good rush from Peter Grandolfo, the senior captain. And the referee's there to assess it. Yeah, his angle got cut off there, and he, he had a pretty big hit on Carter Hagen there. Glad he's okay. And just like that, Darian's Porter Barnett will go to the box. Sending Fairfield Prep up on the man up. Only going to be 30 seconds, but Fairfield Prep looking to capitalize after Hagen made his first stop. They do have the extra player out there. Fairfield Prep looking to capitalize behind the net at X. Shanahan passing it right back over to Little. The shot there. High stop by Hagen. Carter Hagen looking like a professional out there. Two for two with his stops, turning away the Jesuits. Now Darian looking to go on their first offense of the contest. Looking to successfully clear it. There's Lancaster off to Dylan Doriso in the attacking zone. Hit up and turned away. Losing it to Grandolfo. Great defense there from Gavin McCarthy to force that quick turnover. Turnover Doriso now. Dylan Doriso spinning. He'll be knocked down. No call on it. That could have been good for the wave. Instead, the Jesuits pick it right back up. Over to the long stick of McCarthy. Fighting through on the ride. Slowing it down now is number 50, Brandon Malahi. Malahi, a sophomore, but had a big part in Fairfield Prep's SCC championship a year ago. They won that count for the last five years. Thinking about it, but retreating is Lombardo, one of five captains on the Fairfield Prep Jesuits team. Spinning around, shooting, going low, stopped by Carter Hagen. And the Loyola Maryland Greyhound, Loyola Maryland bound Greyhound, Carter Hagen has three stops in this contest. Yeah, Carter's looking good. First year as a starter for the Wave, and he's already got three saves on the board. Briggs McGuckin knocked out of play. Again, Darian not able to get their first offense going. That's something that Darian really thrived at last year was the offensive production. They scored 200... 339 goals, rather, in their 20-plus games last season. But here we are, scoreless. Seven minutes into this opening quarter between Darien and Fairfield Prep. Up top, that's Fox. The other Boston University Terrier. Down low, the shot stopped by Hagen. Ground ball fielded by the Jesuits. They stay on it, Lombardo. No shot clock in Connecticut High School boys lacrosse, so Fairfield Prep in no rush whatsoever, and they'll set right back up. Fox. Kicked away by Mac McGarren. He'll field it. Whistle called. Mac McGarren, one of uh, a couple Darien commits. He's going off to Bucknell. And the flag was thrown on it. Out at the Fairfield F. That will send Doriso off. So Doriso will take a near fail. Doriso will take a knee. Fairfield prep will go on the man up once again. Another 30-second 
penalty on Darianne. Darianne's defense has really kept this in this in their game in this game right now. Carter Hagen keeping them in it. Their defense got is getting tired and they got to get those the ball into the offensive side. Slowing it down, Malahi. Now Shanahan. 20 seconds left on the man up. Fairfield Prep was unable to convert on their last one. Prep looking to use the extra player. Shot from Fox. He scores. Tyler Fox draws first blood, and Fairfield Prep breaks our scoreless drought. The senior captain picking up goal number one on the new campaign, and Fairfield Prep converts on the man up. That was a great man up goal for Prep there. They took their time, didn't force anything, and they were able to find a time and room shot for Tyler Fox. Tyler Fox coming up big for Fairfield Prep. 7.37 left in this opening quarter. And Fox has goal number one. And Cooper, what does Darian need to do now that eight minutes in, they haven't had much offense and they're trailing now? Well, they got to really hold on to ball security, take their time on offense, give their defense obviously some time to rest. And right here, they're going to get a penalty. Fairfield prep, uh, penalty going to be assessed. The referees throw their third flag of the contest. Got a little chippy for the referees' likings. Looks like it might be a cross check in the back. And number 16 for the Jesuits, Luke Lombardo, the captain, will be sent off. Darianne getting their first look on the man up. Just 30 seconds, but Darianne will need to get some offense on it. Brady Picorni, we haven't seen much of him. But yet again, we are just eight minutes in. Billado, the freshman, getting the start for Jeff Braymeyer's squad. There's Billado. He'll take the shot through some traffic. Doesn't get to Barry. Rebound by Barnett. Seven seconds left on the man up. Past the stick of Doriso. He can't stay with it, and possession goes to Fairfield Prep. Not the possession Darianne was looking for. And now the long stick of McCarthy once again touching it. McCorney looking to knock it loose. He can't do so. Had a potential Pat, Pat and Royal in front of the cage. Instead, it was Shanahan keeping it to himself. And there's going to be a Darian penalty here. So McCorney went offside. So now he's playing defense. So the delayed penalty against Darian. Fairfield Prep will get the free possession here. Grandolfo. See that red light from the scoreboard really dawning down as Grandolfo will retreat it back. Jesuit pride here at Rafferty Stadium. Verminder knocked down. Flag is still out. And the Jesuits finally, and the what, refs finally blow the whistle. It's a good minute or so killed from the time the flag was thrown and the referees keeping a good grip on this game. If you saw there, they actually had Bacorny down on the crease, probably there for a slide instead of doubling the ball. So the Jesuits had time to set up a play. So Fairfield Prep going back on the man up. They scored their last time thanks to the stick of Tyler Fox. Fox had a goal against Darianne last year when they met in the state semifinals. But still a low scoring affair. Only 1-0 in the early goings. Prep looking for the open player, Mulehi. Grandolfo shoots that one just high off the shot clock. Not turned on, but a little Gr bit high. Grandolfo is not afraid to let it rip from the outside. He's got a fast, hard shot. 
A lot of the players out on the Jesuits team ha have those abilities, such as Marco and Tyler Fox. Darian now across the midway point. There's number 55, Elliot Lancaster. Junior for the wave. Shot goes out. Possession to the Jesuits. Bayfield Prep back on the ride. Into the attacking zone is Luke Shanahan, the sophomore. Wrapping this one around. Just high past the stick of Fox. Trying his luck as Luke Lombardo. Down low to nobody. And that's going to Darien. So the wave dodges the bullet there. And with 422 left in this opening quarter. Darien. Darren's got to take their time on this offense, offensive possession, if they can get it over. They haven't had much of any offense, a lot of turnovers right when they get it, and their defense is definitely getting tired. Jake Wilson looking for the successful clear. Gets it off to his teammate, number 33, Max McBride, one of uh, five freshmen on this Darien team. Porter Barnett, the Bucknell-bound junior for Darianne. He'll be joining his teammate, Mac McGarren, for the Bison in two springs. Porter looking for something on the attack. Throws this one to no receiver. Good recovery by Brady Picorni. Picorni with the spin dodge. Shoots this one just wide. And thanks to Dylan DeRiso, it stays with the wave. Great dodge there from Porter Barnett. He realized that he had the shorty and tried to take advantage. Corny looking to go overhand with it. Couldn't quite get something there. And if you're Darian, you just keep shooting. That's uh, eventually one's going to fall, right? Uh, that, that, that should be how it goes. <laughs> no, it's not the mentality. Well, as long as Darian has their backup guy, they can shoot as much as they want to regain the possession. Looking for Doriso. He can't get there. Barry comes out and grabs it in his crease. The sophomore from Fairfield Prep seeing his first touch. Still hasn't seen a shot yet. Barnett was looking to get there. Fox down low. One on one stop by Hagen. Crease violation called. But the referees are going to let him play on. Big hit in the midfields. That was Lancaster laying out for it. Lancaster showing off the inner hockey player in him right there with that check in the midfields. Yeah, he's never afraid to get up onto a defender. Flag has been thrown. So Darianne will get a free possession here. Whistle called, but the flag will be assessed against the Jesuits. This one will be sending number 16 off for Fairfield Prep. Luke Lombardo. Seeing the penalty, a minute penalty. So Darian getting an extended man up here. That's Luke Lombardo's second penalty of the day. Ben Bilodeau. To Barnett. Going behind the back was Doriso. Crease violation call. That's going the other way. So Dylan Doriso is looking to make it fancy and lost track of where he was on the field. Yeah, Doriso's had a tough go at it to start out to start out this game. Maybe it's some nerves for his first varsity game, but hopefully, hopefully he can settle in. Played in some varsity action last year. It was his first varsity start, however, this season. He uh, he scored four goals against the West Hill Vikings in last year's state playoffs. That was a quarterfinal game. But Dylan Doriso, the uh, DAF announcer 
in the winter. I guess you could say he's a star announcer, taking his talents to the lacrosse fields. As we will now see a timeout taken with 148 left. We're going to step aside on the DAF Media Network, and we'll be right back with more Varsity Boys lacrosse action between Darianne and Fairfield Prep on the DAF Media Network. We're back on the DAF Media Network after the timeout. 34 seconds left on the Darien man up. Fairfield Prep will start with the ball. Number 41 for the Jesuits, Peter Grandolfo. Grandolfo going to the cage. He'll score. Falling to the ground, Peter Grandolfo gives the Jesuits the score, and it's 2-0 Fairfield Prep. Grandolfo just used his speed there to get around both Darien defenders, and he came right in front of the crease and it was almost impossible for Hagen to get a save on that one. Peter Grandolfo, unassisted, picks up the goal for Fairfield Prep, and just like that, Darianne needs to start getting the offense going or else it might be too late for Darianne. Darianne's number one problem right now, it has to be the turnovers. They're getting unforced errors, getting the crease violation, dropping passes, they just gotta fix up those sloppy mistakes. Back to the face-off X. Big hit there. Referees let him play on. A little over 90 seconds left before the end of the quarter. Darian has not really had a shot on goal so far in this contest. Lancaster. Over to Brady Picorni. Corny off the screen. Pretty likes the shorty on him. But Corny the shot. Just wide. Out of play and possession staying with the wave. Good tactic to keep the man back. 56 seconds left in the quarter. Picorni, that one stopped by the Fairfield Prep defender in number 27, George Howley. So Matt Berry has not seen all that much action in net for Fairfield Prep. There's been four shots on goal, and they've all came from Picorni. Bilodeau's shot was blocked on the man up, so he hasn't fa faced much action. That's right. Darian, they're going to need to... I've been saying all afternoon, they got to get the offense going here. Down 2 nothing. Shots stopped by Hagen. Carter Hagen's keeping Darianne in this game. Hagen's done a phenomenal job all day. And here comes the rain. That's going to take us to the end of the first quarter. Fairfield Prep leads Darianne 2 0. The downpour begins, and we are in for a fun night of lacrosse on the DAF Media Network. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
We're back on the DAF Media Network. 12 more minutes up on the scoreboard to start this second quarter. Fairfield Prep and Darian in game number one of the 2023 high school boys lacrosse season. Some fatefuls sticking it out in the bleachers. As we mentioned, the uh, heavy rain started coming down at the end of that first quarter. Teams do switch sides, though. Faceoff going all the way to the restraining line. Darian looking for the momentum. Ground ball fielded by number 34, Palmer Furminder. Brothers with Marco Furminder. Players are sliding now. And they're going to say Furminder was out of bounds. I mean, this is crazy. You can see it on your screen, folks. That's rain in the top right corner. It's not mist. It is pure rain. And, Cooper, you've played in weather like this out there. Is it fun? If you're playing, yes, because your body will stay warm. If you're on the sidelines, it's probably not as enjoyable as if you were out on the field. It will affect the game. The ball is going to become a little slick. There's going to be a lot of probably more dropped passes. But all these players have faced these conditions before. I mean, luckily, we're nice and warm in this beautiful Rafferty Stadium. Press box, the shot just high. And possession staying with the wave, but... The rain is coming down quite hard here in Fairfield, Connecticut, and they're going to keep playing as long as there's no thunder in the area. McBride, down low. Nice save from Doriso. Rupenstein faking it out, going to his left side and shooting it just high. The ball is going to start coming off a little high like that, so they're going to have to aim their shots a little more downward. Darian slowing it down here. That pass to nobody. Going back out to the restraining line. Good touch there by the long stick of Mac Mc McNamari. McBride on the offense. The freshman. Through some traffic. Rupenstein scores! Morgan Rupenstein out of nowhere! Beats Barry and gets Darian on the board. That play had chaos written all over it, but Mor Mor Morgan Rupenstein converts for Darian. It was a great play here from Rupenstein. He picked up the ground ball, got over the defender, and I don't think the goalie was ready for it. Matt Barry didn't see that one coming right there. He thought the ball was still going to be a scrum for it. Instead, it's Barry taking the shot and scoring. Not Barry. Rupenstein scoring on Barry for Darian's first goal on the season. They cut it down to a 2 1 deficit. And a clean face off win there. The Fogo Bacchus falling and he hits it off the post. The junior Fogo player for the Northern Lacrosse Club team just slipped up with the slippery condition. And uh, if it's not raining yet, I think that's a much better shot. Shanahan moving it along. While we have a moment, I do want to shout out the Darien Lacrosse alumni watching us at Colgate University. I want to thank uh, the Fergusons, Minikisses, Ericsons, Rupensteins. Uh, that's Colin Rupenstein, DHS alum. Shot there, stopped by Hagen. He must be happy to see his brother, Morgan Rupenstein, getting Darien on the board. It's well, always good to see your younger brother. Shanahan looking intercepted. He can't quite get there. Good move off to Porter Barnett. The junior's off to the races. Barry needs to come out of ways. Barnett the shot just wide. Man, Doriso's there to keep it with Darianne. Barry looked a little out of, out of place there. Could have been a huge error for the Jesuits. Porter Barnett off the screen. And that is going against Darianne. The illegal screen. Starting to think my weather, oh, there we go. My weather app just updated. It was showing a uh, clear, sunny day, even though that's not what we have here at Fairfield University. Torrential downpour between uh, Darien, or occurring during Darien and Fairfield prep. Wind moving from left to right. Shot stopped by Carter Hagen. He loses it, but then pounces on it inside his crease. Yeah, that was a huge save from Hagen. 
Fox had all day in the middle to aim that shot. And Hagen's doing a great job at keeping the wave in this game. Hagen had a nice scrimmage on Wednesday where he shut the number one player in the nation, Matt Jeffrey of Cheshire. He shut him out for an entire half. That's quite the remarkable accomplishment. And Carter Hagen, just a junior in his first year starting for Jeff Braymeyer, backed up Cam Weibel last season. Weibel graduated, and now it's Carter Hagen's turn to be the two-year starter for Darian. And he is just such a fundamentally great goalie. He does a great job of putting his body on the line to make some incredible saves. Teresto gets right back up. Down low, Picorni can't grab it. Barnett shoots off the stick of Barry. Quick restart for the wave, looking to use the numbers. Shot from the point, he scores! Going low and faking out the goalie is number 50, Dylan Doriso. With the goal, and he gets the equalizer for Darian. Yeah, that's a great goal there for Dylan's confidence, too. He had a little struggle in the beginning half of the game, dropped some passes, a little some turnovers, but that's a huge goal there to get the equalizer. Dylan Doriso picking up his first goal of the season, and we are knotted up at two. The Darian senior coming up big. And the game of runs continues. Darian on a 2-0 scoring run. But yet again, it is still early in this second quarter. Nice student section for Darian showing up, and they're sticking it out through the rain. Just noticed that. But yet again, Fairfield Prep doing the same. Timeout taken by Jeff Braymeyer and the Wave. And Cooper, what do you think Jeff Braymeyer's telling his guys during this timeout right now? Well, the, Dar the, D the Blue Wave have done a great job this quarter. You know, slow offensive possessions, not really forcing anything. And it's, it's, been, it's made them able to come back in this game. And the downpour continues, but Jeff Braymeyer will take a timeout. We're going to step aside on the DAF Media Network, and we'll be right back with more second quarter action between Darian and Fairfield Prep in the 2023 opener. Back on the DAF Media Network, 7.32 left after the timeout from Jeff Braymeyer. And Darianne, they have got themselves back tied at two. Max McBride. McBride, he shoots, gets his own rebound, and that time shoots it out. The goal was wide open. Barry was still on the ground from the previous save. You can see the fans in the back looking to get some cover. Staying with it. Shooting stop by Barry. That was Barnett looking for a goal. Barry with two great saves. Overshooting McCarthy. Grabbed by Jake Wilson. It's actually Mac McGarren. My apologies. Senior captain. I believe Jake wore uh, number 12 during the football season. Is that why I associate him with number 12? Um, number 12 on the Darren lacrosse team is only given to one senior each year. So it's an honored number. It is indeed. And Mac McGarren wearing the lucky number 12 this season, taking it over from David Ivanchik, who now is at Villanova playing for the Wildcats. But was I right, though, that Jake in the football season was number 12? Uh, I am not sure. I, he... 
I believe he might. So I'm not sure why I saw number 12. I thought Jake Wilson immediately. Yet again, I still got to get used to these new lacrosse rosters here in 2023. Brady Picorni. It's actually Dylan DeRiso, number 50. Against Fairfield Preps, number 50. Fairfield Prep yet to score in this second quarter. Rain's starting to slow down. Ooh, looking for the fancy move was Brady Picorni. He had a nice behind-the-back goal against Cheshire on Wednesday. And Notre Dame bound Brady Picorni. We'll keep it with Darian. Losing his stick on it was Dylan DeRiso. Good job by Alex Mayer. Mayer, a sophomore on Fairfield Prep, a defender. Now it's getting chippy once again. No flag on it. Darien coming away with it. They've got the five-man rush. Down low, the shot. He scores! Darien picks up the big goal right there. Who was that? Number 50, Dylan Doriso, yet again showing his dominance. And Darien's got their first lead of the season. A lot of credit to Brady Picorni here. He was able to ride the Jesuits, get, his, get the GB, and find an open Doriso. Dylan Doriso, the senior, picks up his second goal. And Darien now on a 3 0 goal run. Doriso, the Express Club product getting his first start tonight for Jeff Braymeyer. And he so far has done a pretty good job. Two out of three is Darien's goals coming from the stick of Doriso. That was Leo Barba, Barba Gallo, the sophomore. Fogo for Darien. Violation called against him. Another name, Barba Gallo. Gonna have to get that one to roll off the tongue. One of four freshmen on Darien's roster. Actually, five. Called up on uh, last minute last night. But still, Cooper, it just shows the young talent that Jeff Braymeyer has on this team. Yeah, this year, this year it's a almost a completely new look at the midi, at the midi line. Stop by Hagen Atta once again. The attackmen are almost the same. Doriso, Bardak got a little play action last year. Uh, but obviously, Picorni's out there. And for the defense, Jake Wilson and Mac McGarren bring the experience for them. Mac McGarren using one hand to grab it is Kevin Roach. Roach, the 6'8 uh, sophomore for Darianne. Not every day you see that. You would think he would play a sport like volleyball or something in the spring with the 6'8 height, but he uh, finds a way to make it, make it useful in the uh, lacrosse field. His sister Jillian Roach is off to Colby for volleyball, so volleyball is definitely in the family. It is indeed. Four minutes left here before halftime. Brady Picorni. And that one is a goal. Brady Picorni doing the impossible. And just like that, Darien keeps on rolling. If you blink, you'll miss it. Brady Picorni. Shooting that one, top cheddar. McCorney just backs down his defender there and gets a quick shot off, and Barry never saw it. 4-0 scoring run in favor of the Wave. Back to the faceoff X. One cleanly by Barbagallo. Leo Barbagallo, the sophomore. Winning it from the faceoff X, and he turns it over, but still a big win for Barbara Gallo. I noticed in that scrimmage against Wednesday, he was going more for the scrum than to win the faceoff straight up like he did right there. An interesting tactic for Darian, and uh, something that when you compare him to Ty Comiskey last year, Comiskey went for the win every time. Using the ground to roll it to his teammate Shanahan. Missioner realized that the wind might have taken that ball. Just keep it on the ground. Don't let any physics come into play. Marco Furminder. Furminder! Shot stopped by the big spoon of Carter Hagen. Hagen continuing to make the masterful saves.
Now Darian picking it right back up. Max McBride. Shoots and scores! The freshman Max McBride picks up the goal. And Darian on a 5-0 run now. Yeah, he got that ball and immediately went right to the rack. There was no one that was going to get in his way to stop him. Career goal number one for Max McBride. And Fairfield Prep has not had an answer to Darian in this second quarter. It's been all blue wave. Complete opposite of what we saw in that opening quarter. And now Leo Barbagallo going back to the faceoff X. Looking to win another for the wave. Faceoff will be won by Fairfield Prep. Looking to get the offense. They have not scored since the first quarter. Barbagallo the Fogo. Knocked loose of his stick. The five Fairfield Prep defenders playing the defense. And the timeout will be taken by head coach Graham Niami. Assume as we talked about in the last one for possession for Fairfield Prep. Nonetheless, timeout taken with 2.31 left before halftime. We're going to step aside on the DAF Media Network and we'll be right back. Players break their huddles, and uh, we're back in action here with under three minutes left before halftime. Darian has scored five unanswered goals in the second quarter. Fairfield Prep has not scored since the first quarter. Marco Furmander looking to change that. Now Grandolfo. Retreating it out of the attacking third. There's that gust of wind. Some umbrellas now starting to fly. But again, we're not here to tell you the weather. We're here to tell you about this Darien Fairfield, Fairfield Prep lacrosse game. Shot just wide off the stick of number 11, Maddox Little. Little is second year starter for Fairfield Prep. Couldn't quite get the angle on his shot and Shanahan forced to restart. Slipping to it. Darian looking to use it to their advantage. Fox. Faced with the defending of the big stick of Wilson. Now McGarren shifting over to face Furminder. Malahi. Fox from the point. And that one is just off. Pylon's flying off. McNamara is doing a great job against Tyler Fox. Isn't getting, giving him anything. And he was forced to take that outside shot. That was again deflected. McNamara, the first year sophomore for Darian. Furminder at X. Furminder looking for a cutter. 
Wilson coming over. And that one in no man's land. Barnett on the scrum. Porter Barnett comes away with it. 35 seconds to work. Can Darien get one more? The shot. It's good. Briggs McGuckin adding one to his name. And Darien go nuts. Briggs McGuckin has the sixth goal for the wave. Yeah, Darian coming off a great defensive possession, not, not allowing almost anything for the Jesuits, and then to immediately bring it down and find McGuckin for a nice time and room shot is exactly what the Wave wanted to do. It's going to be interesting how Darian comes out of the halftime locker room because we've seen two different Darian teams, Cooper Puff. The first quarter Darian team didn't get any offense, and this second quarter team is truly just unstoppable if you're a Fairfield prep. It almost seems like the elements or the rain, rather, has uh, made Darian play at a higher level than they were in the first quarter. Timeout taken by Jeff Braymeyer. 26 seconds left. He'll set up his offense, looking to get one more before the halftime break. 6-2, to two, Darian leads Fairfield Prep. You're watching the DAF Media Network. We're going to step aside and be right back with the conclusion of this first half. DAF Media is actively seeking financial support. Founded in 2017, DAF Media has quickly become Southwestern Connecticut's source for quality sports, arts, and community programming. If you like what you see on the DAF Media Network and want to help us continue to deliver high quality broadcasts while teaching lifelong STEM, communication, organization, and leadership skills, please email us at sponsor at dafmedia.org. We are a registered 501c3 organization. Fifty six degrees, pouring rain out. Thirteen mile per hour winds. That's the forecast in Fairfield, Connecticut. You can just see it on your screen. And uh it's really coming down there. But the players will have twenty six seconds left before they'll head into the nice cozy locker rooms for halftime. Darian's got the possession just outside the attacking third. Elliot Lancaster will be the one to restart it. Ashi Picorni, Lancaster to his right. Darianna scored the last six goals in this contest. Picorni, he has one of them. Shoots it just high. 14 seconds left. The clock does stop. Dereso to Barnett. Barnett gets tripped up. And the possession going to the Jesuits. Nine seconds. Can they get something? Hail Mary downfield. And that is going to do it for the end of the first half. Darien leads Fairfield Prep 6-2 to two in game number one. Got chippy there at the end. The referees came in. But Cooper, what happened to Darien between the first and second quarters? Well, they did a great job on the defensive side. And their offense took their time, didn't turn over the ball, and they found great opportunities for goals. Carter Hagen on the defensive side came up huge for the Wave with numerous saves, and he's kept them in this game. 6-2, to two, Darian leads Fairfield Prep. The Jesuits did not score in the second quarter, so it's going to be interesting how the final 24 minutes play out here from Rafferty Stadium on the campus of Fairfield University. We're going to be back with the second half between Darian and Fairfield Prep, so don't go anywhere because it's going to be an intriguing finish here on the DAF Media Network. The Darien Foundation was founded in 1998 by Richard and Maureen Chilton, and the thesis behind that founding was to bring technology to the Darien public school systems. And that launched us, and that got us going, and through technology and capital project initiatives, we've now funded over five and a half million over the last 24 years to build a better Darien. Our board really likes to get involved and assist the partners that we collaborate with, whether it's 
a grant for a youth project or a grant from a community service, schools, the police, often they come to us with ideas that we help them bring to fruition. The Darien Foundation recently awarded the Darien Police Department two grants. One was for LaserShot and the other for Faro technology. LaserShot technology is based on decision making. It may come down to using their firearm, but in reality, we would like them to talk the situation down where you use less lethal force, and this program allows us to do that. Police drop the gun! Faro technology gives us a 360 degree view, catching all the points we need to catch in our accident scene. It also takes a lot less time. This allows us to open up roads, get traffic flowing a lot quicker than we ever used to be able to. We can also map the inside of buildings. We can use it at outdoor crime scenes, indoor crime scenes. It's really used for a plethora of investigations. It's a tool that most other departments may not have their hands on just yet. And thanks to the Darien Foundation, we have that technology. At Home in Darien is a nonprofit organization that helps senior citizens to remain living independently in their home and in the community. We provide important services to help them do so, such as transportation. Thanks to the Darien Foundation, we have this amazing new van, and we are so excited about it and what it'll do for the community. From all standpoints, this is going to be a real improvement in the services we provide, both in terms of safety and comfort. The Darien Foundation is important to the community in the scope that they reach out to answer needs. Post 53 is the town's ambulance service. We respond to over 1,600 emergency calls a year for a vital service that has been here for 51 years. The technology upgrades provided by the Darien Foundation has been a game changer for us. It's allowed us to improve our training. It has helped us hone our skills. You don't know how important an ambulance is until you actually need it. Thanks to our partnership with the Darien Foundation, who's provided all this technology and several grants throughout the years, we're able to continue to be prepared, to be well-trained and well-staffed, to respond 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whenever you need it. The Darien Foundation is really excited to be able to launch a new program for the Darien Schools which will benefit students K through 12 in all seven schools. This is the new robotics program which will be an extracurricular opportunity for students to build robots, compete against other leagues, and collaborate together. Our robotics program is going to benefit students in so many ways. Regular classes students are always looking for the right answer, that there's only one way to answer something. Robotics is completely different. In robotics, you learn that there are multiple solutions to every problem. You learn that you have these obstacles that you have to overcome. You have to really be a creative problem solver. And most importantly, you need to persevere. Early on in the process, the Darianne Foundation reached out to administration and the offer to provide funding for a project and it just dovetailed beautifully to the goals of the strategic plan. And I look forward to continuing to work closely with the Darien Foundation both on this project and other projects down the line. We welcome ideas for possible grants. We'd like to do grants that promote and strengthen our community. Sometimes it's from an organization, sometimes it's from our emergency service partners or it's from the Darien Public Schools. One of our most popular grants, which was the Playground by the Sound, came to us from four Darien moms who said, let's get together and figure out how to build this. Thanks to the generosity of our board members and officers, every dollar you give to the Darien Foundation goes directly to the grants that we're supporting. I invite all of you to help us move our community further and support the Darien Foundation. Celebrating and supporting Darien athletes. That is a simple mission of the Darien Athletic Foundation. Broadcasting live from the field, DAF Media covers 125 games a year. All Darien teams, our youth, in our town, on our field. Fields like the Center Oval and Upper Oval Turfs, the JV Softball Field, and Stadium East, the longest turf in New England all made possible by the Darien Athletic Foundation 
and its generous founders and donors. The Darien Athletic Foundation is not just committed to building our town's athletic infrastructure, it's improving the civic infrastructure for everyone to enjoy. The multimedia scoreboard, the snack bar pavilion, and the stadium lights, a $750,000 investment that makes Darien High School just the second school in Connecticut with LED lights. The Darien Athletic Foundation board is made up of local parents, parents who know just how quickly it goes by. Its archives of more than 60,000 photos capture those precious moments of our young athletes as they strive to be their very best. The Darien Athletic Foundation has raised almost nine and a half million dollars for our town and its kids, and it's not stopping there. As it continues to build a legacy for our youth as bright as their future, both on and off the field. DAF Media is actively seeking financial support. Founded in 2017, DAF Media has quickly become Southwestern Connecticut's source for quality sports, arts, and community programming. If you like what you see on the DAF Media Network and want to help us continue to deliver high quality broadcasts while teaching lifelong STEM, communication, organization and leadership skills, please email us at sponsor at dafmedia.org. We are a registered 501c3 organization. Back on the DAF Media Network, going to take a look at our series history between Darien and Fairfield Prep. Today, meeting number five all time between the Jesuits and the Wave. Only the uh, third time they're meeting in the regular season, but Cooper Darien is 2-0 all time in regular season meetings against Fairfield Prep. Yeah, the Darien, has, Darien, the Wave have been able to get the best of Prep during the regular season, but in the playoffs, Prep has lost twice to them, and Darien has, uh, and they, Prep beat them as the eighth seed. You mentioned that game that Fairfield Prep won. The only time that Fairfield Prep took down Darien, June 5th, 2021 at Darien High School, the one versus the eight matchup in which Fairfield Prep came to Darien, stunned the Wave by the final 14 to 10, advanced to the state championship where they fell to Richfield that year. But Darien was still in disbelief, the fact they lost to an eight seed in the quarterfinals. That was the only time Fairfield Prep has ever beaten Darien. And you mentioned the new schedule realignment and uh, Darien being able to schedule three more out-of-conference games this was one of the games head coach Jeff Braemeyer wanted to get back on his schedule as well as he's going to be creating new rivalries with Marinick, New York, and Chatham, New Jersey for the first time in 2023 in lieu of standard FCAC opponents and uh, Trumbull, Norwalk, Danbury, those other teams that are in Division II that Darian won't have to play on a regular basis anymore. Yeah, the, the, that with that new uh, scheduling change, it should allow Darian to get a better look at their whole national ranking as they can play better teams out of their conference and not have to play 
the weaker teams the weaker in the teams F- in FCAC, in the we FCAC. will say. And uh, Jeff Braymeyer wasted no time getting into it. The number 23-ranked team, Fairfield Prep Jesuits, are out on the field tonight against Darien. Thursday, they have a contest against the number one-ranked team in the country, the Brunswick Bruins at the DHS Stadium Field. That game can be seen on the DAF Media Network, and Darien's never beaten, Fair- uh, beaten Brunswick, but that's a game that the Wave will look to win in game number two. Then they follow that by going to Manhasset. Next Saturday, taking the trip to Long Island to take on the Indians of Manhasset, the number 11th ranked team, number 9th ranked team actually in the country. So that's how Darien opens three nationally ranked opponents. But again, they are focused on Fairfield Prep for 24 more minutes as they lead by four. And Coop, what is something that Fairfield Prep needs to do differently in this third quarter? They got to they gotta finish. They got to finish their shots. Hagen has come up huge for the wave, but there have been numerous opportunities where it's been one-on-one with the keeper and Hagen's came out with the victory. The uh, Darien Jr. Carter Hagen having one game to remember. Starting his first game in 2023, and he has made so many saves for Darien, and he has helped Fairfield prep to uh, just two goals. And again, those were both coming in the first quarter, so the Jesuits have not scored in the last 12 minutes. Barbaglio can't get there, and it's Bacchus that comes away with it. Braden Shank, Cooper Puff with you. So glad you be with us on the DAF Media Network. DAF, a joint venture of the Darien Athletic Foundation and the Darien Foundation. Our student production crew this afternoon, or tonight rather, bringing you the sights and sounds in this one. Thomas Aponte, Liam Tomaszewski, Andrew Lee, Owen Gluck, and Will Donnelly, our DAF media advisor, Damian Andrew, all Darien High School seniors bringing you coverage of this opener for the 2023 Blue Wave lacrosse team in the goal from Maddox Little. He breaks the Fairfield prep scoring drought, and the Jesuits looking for better fortunes in the second half. That's definitely what the Jesuits wanted to do, come out fast and score early. And Maddox Little able to get, the, get it started for them. Maddox Little, the Hamilton commits. He puts up a goal, his first in the new campaign. And the senior coming up quite big. Played on this team for three years and uh, picks up the first goal in his senior campaign. And steady downpour continuing at Rafferty Stadium here on the beautiful campus of Fairfield University. Clean face off, one from Ryan Backus. Fairfield Prep student section with their PREP prep chat. Notorious with Prep Athletics. Darian student section. A couple fateful sticking it out through the rain. Number 50, Brandon Mulehi. Now Luke Shanahan looking to try his luck, luck the Eclipse lacrosse product. Tim Shanahan knocked loose by McNamara. Shanahan still staying up with it, getting fancy. Look at a cut, and it's in! Who else but Maddox Little striking again, and Fairfield Prep picks up their fourth. Maddox Little, his second back-to-back, and the Fairfield Prep Jesuits convert on the great ball movement. Yeah, that's back-to-back goals there for Maddox Little, and he's done the exact same thing. He's cut backside. Realized that his defender was ball watching and he's been able to finish. Maddox Little, his second goal on the new campaign. And he just shows off the moves, beating Carter Hagen to cut the Darien lead down to two. Again, a game of runs. Fairfield Prep started on a 2 0 scoring run. Darien went on to score the next six. And now Fairfield Prep back on the 2 0 scoring run. So far, we've yet to see a quarter in which both teams have scored. So uh, definitely some interesting trends to follow in the later half of this contest. Peter Grandolfo, the Bucknell senior, Bucknell commits, soon to be Bison. Going to be joining two Darien players there in the coming years. Talk about a program that's trying to build themselves up in the college scene. The Bucknell Bisons might be familiar with them, Coop. Yeah, they're definitely getting some top recruits here. Porter Barnett, Mac, Mac McGarren, and Peter Dan- Grandolfo. Also getting Cooper Puff, right? 
Uh, well, not for lacrosse. Not for lacrosse, but he'll be going there. No, still a good recruit for the Bucknell Bisons. Fox wraps it around, shoots it just wide. And possession going to Darianne. Tyler Fox, the BU Terrier. Commit and shoots it just wide. Possession going to the wave. Brings McGuckin, the Darian Jr. All the way, Hail Mary to Jake Wilson. Great movement from the wave. That was a great find from McGuckin to Wilson. Now they're, they will be able to set up their offensive possession in their first of this half. The Wave is playing a lot more comfortable out there than they were in that first quarter. Not making as many risky passes, not turning the ball over that much. Giving them the opportunities to set up the offense. Porter Barnett going face-to-face -face with Patton Royal. Barnett. Going to his offhand. Shoots it low. Barry watches it out. Barnett definitely liked the matchup there. He got the shorty switch on him, and he wanted to attack. Unfortunately, he was able not, a, not able to find the back of the net there. Restart from the wave. Four minutes into this third quarter. Darian with the two-goal lead. Bacorny. Spin move. Bacorny shoots it just high. Looking to go behind the back on it, his signature move. Now Bilodeau shoots it, stopped by Barry. The rebound, Doriso can't field the ground ball. Ben Bilodeau was looking for his first career goal. Spin move from Lancaster. Addicts with it, Barnett. Shot just low, stopped by Barry. Matt Barry, the second year sophomore. Transitioning, a successful, cl successful clear for Fairfield Prep. Darianne looking to control the box. They'll bring out a fresh set of legs. And number 28, Stephen Olvaney. Looking to protect his goalkeeper, Hagen. Olvaney stepping right up with Tim Shanahan. Shanahan, the all-SCC first-teamer a year ago for Fairfield Prep. Wraps around, shoots it, stopped by Carter Hagen. Hagen's composure out there is unmatched by this Darianne, unmatched by anyone else on this Darianne team. He just is, has that ability to get to his stick to it, make the big stops time after time again. And Fairfield Prep has just not been able to beat Hagen really all, all that much tonight. He seems unfazed. Even, even if the defender's right, or offensive player's right in front of uh, his face, he's just able to quickly react and get a save. Spin move from Shanahan. Bullet pass finds its way to Grandolfo. There is an offsides penalty that is delayed right now. So the Jesuits definitely want to take their time and try to get a free possession. Fox. Getting prep on the free possession here. Fox the shot. Stopped by Hagen, and there will be the penalty assessment. Good bullet shot from Tyler Fox. Scored the first two for the Jesuits. And again, Hagen makes the stop, but Darian will send a player to the box for a 30-second penalty against number eight. Brings McGuckin. And Prep gets their luck with the man up once again. Braden Shank, Cooper Puff with you. So glad you can be with us on the DAF Media Network. Bringing you live coverage of the 2023 high school boys lacrosse season opener. 
between the Darien Blue Wave and the Fairfield Prep Jesuits, live from Rafferty Stadium on the campus of Fairfield University. What a way to start the 2023 season playing in a venue like Rafferty Stadium. Don't think you can get much more perfect than this. Fox stopped by Hagen, and that's how it gets better right there. Carter Hagen continuing his monsterful night. Wave looking to use the speed. Penalty killed off. Both teams back to even strength as that pass soars past Barnett and out of play. Randolfo slowing it down in the box now. Prep on a 2-0 scoring run in this third quarter. Randolfo down low, flag thrown. Shot stopped by Hagen. He pounces on it. That one coming off the twig of Maddox Little. But the penalty will send Darian's Rupenstein to the box. Take another look at it. Stop it here as they assess the penalty, but Fairfield Prep will go man up. It's actually into number nine against the Wave. We don't have a number nine listed on our roster, so it appears they may have made an error on who they gave the penalty to. Definitely interesting. A letter of a 19, a 29, a 9. Nonetheless, Prep is on the man up. The mysterious Darian player goes to the box. Shot there. Just past Hagen. It appears the penalty was actually on number 26, Mark McManera. Pretty close to number nine, though. Yeah, there were a couple numbers off. Uh, just a couple. Tim Shanahan behind the net. Gets it out. The shot stopped by Hagen. He spins around. That was off the stick of number 50, Brandon Malahi. Malahi, the second-year varsity player. And with 3.40 left in this third quarter, Fairfield Prep will take advantage of the last nine seconds on their man up. Fox spinning around. McNamara released. Darian back to even strength. Shot there off the post. Hagen can't find it. It eventually scoops it up. That one off the top crossbar. And as the saying goes, sometimes the aluminum is the goaltender's best friend. Long stick to long stick. Mac McGarren with the touch. Just past the head of Jake Wilson. He regains possession. All three officials blowing the whistle. Fairfield Prep will gain possession. Darian not able to clear it successfully. Dumping that one off. Eventually skipping its way to Fox. He'll wrap around and score! Tyler Fox striking once again. The flag is thrown. But Tyler Fox adds another to Prep's cause. Take another look at it. Scoops up the ground ball. Uses the space and goes top notch on Carter Hagen. And I believe they're going to give Jake Henderson, number 16, an unnecessary roughness. It looked like he hit Fox a little bit after he shot it. And they will, so the Jesuits will start with possession. Although it's not going to be a man up, correct? Both teams will start even strength? Yes, they will. 
So penalty enforced to the faceoff. Fairfield Prep automatically winning the faceoff. Guess you count it as a faceoff win for Fairfield Prep. The blue wave will be man down to start to start this. They'll be down, man down for a minute. And it looks like our buddy number nine going back to the box. Still not entirely sure what they're, how they get a nine out of that. But on the last, Darian will go player down. Fairfield Prep man up for the next minutes. Shot and it's in. Who else but Tyler Fox continuing to dominate Hagen. And Fox has another. Fox has been uh, Hagen's kryptonite tonight. Fox has found the back of the goal four times, two in the first quarter and two in the third. Tyler Fox scoring another for Fairfield Prep, the senior captain, starting off his campaign on the right note. An all SEC first teamer a year ago at 47 goals to his 68 points. And he knots this up at six with only two minutes left in the third quarter. So Darian, they uh, have watched as their four-goal lead trickled away. Ground ball fielded by Gavin McCarthy, and Prep once again wins the faceoff. Knocked loose. Wilson can't grab it, and then he gets it to Picorni. Picorni into the box. Shoots it just wide, and possession going to the wave. Although nice effort from number 36 of the Jesuits. Try to get that. Darian has not seen much offense in the third quarter. As now they get it to Luke Caesar, wearing number seven. A lot of people know him from uh, his brother Joe Caesar playing last season for Darian. Now at Georgetown playing for the Hoyas. All FCAC first teamer for the wave a season ago. And now he passes it over to his younger brother Luke to try to continue the Caesar torch. Tripped up on it, no call. That's McGuckin falling to the ground. Barnett recovers. Barnett at X to Doriso. Picorni leaping up. Fairfield Prep student section continuing to get in it in the pouring rain. Picorni, heads up. He likes that behind the back shot, doesn't he? He really does. He's not afraid to use it either. Flag has been thrown. So Darian getting the free possession. Picorni spinning his way out of it. Brady shoots it. And eventually Prep will touch it. And the referees will now interject. 6-6. Six, six. Oh. Our score. Just me that saw that? Oh, I thought I saw something. No? Guess I'm crazy. Been a long day for sure. So the referees are going to talk on it. They're going to keep playing nonetheless. I could have swore I saw something. Guess I'm just crazy. I'm not sure. Uh, it's like a flash in the sky. I must have missed that. Maybe I was too focused on the penalty against Fairfield Prep. Alex Meyer. Shot in a goal. Darian gets one right back. Matt Berry did not see that shot as Darian picks up another off the stick of Morgan Rupenstein. Morgan's second goal of the game, and, and, he, and he got it at a clutch time. Rupenstein once again scoring. That will release Fairfield Prep player from the box, and Darian has got the lead right back. Jesuits have done a great job this quarter at 
winning the face off here. Darren definitely going to have to do something. Silsby and Bacchus on the face off X. Bacchus can't corral it. Scrum in the middle. Long stick of Bonner comes away with it. Big hit there. Lancaster's helmet comes off, and the referees will stop play. Looks like the refs might talk that one over. And they're going to give him a push, in behi push from behind. So Darren will maintain possession. Six seconds left in the third quarter. And unlike in football, even though Lancaster's helmet came off, he does not have to go off the field. Shot just high, and that will take us to the end of the third quarter. Fairfield Prep came all the way back, nodded us up at six, but then Morgan Rupenstein got Daring in on the board to give him the seven to six lead, and that is where we stand after three quarters of play. We're going to step aside on the DAF Media Network, but don't go anywhere because we still have 12 minutes of lacrosse left between Daring Ann and Fairfield Prep in the 2023 Boys Lacrosse season opener. This broadcast is produced by DAF Media, a joint venture between the Darien Foundation and the Darien Athletic Foundation. The production is staffed by student and adult volunteers from the town of Darien and southwestern Connecticut. We're back on the DAF Media Network 7-6. Darien leads Fairfield Prep. But again, there's still 12 minutes left, so it's anybody's game, but we're going to take a look at Darien's road ahead and their next couple games. Again, they play Brunswick on Thursday, the number one team in the nation. The Bruins come to Darien High School, then they take the trips to Manhasset, New York. Fairfield Love, though, they welcome in the Flyers of Chaminade for the second ever meeting on Thursday, 4-13. And again, you can see the games broadcasted by DAF Media, and that streaming schedule is subject to change. After three quarters of play, Darien leads Fairfield Prep 7-6 from Rafferty Stadium. Silsby and Bacchus back at the faceoff X. Up in the air. A lot of people jumping for it. It's past the restraining line. Keeping it alive is McCarthy. Like a gazelle kept that one alive. At X, Bacorny, just outside the crease, looking to use the footwork. Dumps it off to Barnett. He didn't see it coming. And Barry will corral it. Bad pass. Losing it is Royal. Darian going to make good use of it. Braden Shank, Cooper Puff with you. So glad you can be with us on the DAF Media Network. Brady Picorni shooting. Stop by Barry. Big spoon of Matt Barry continuing to make the stops for the Jesuits. Fairfield Prep looking to clear it out. Again, the number 11 team in the nation, Darianne, against the number 23 team in the nation, Fairfield Prep. Game number one of the 2023 season. Both these teams got a 16-game slate ahead of them. And it all will conclude with a state championship in early June. The site of that still to be determined. Last year they played them at the beautiful Sacred Heart University. But again, they have not announced where they will play those for 2023. So will be the only regular season meeting between these two. Fairfield Prep will then move into their SCC conference where they've won the last five years. Darian, the FCAC champions. 
Grandolfo. Moving it right along to Malahi. Malahi stopped by Hagen. And Carter Hagen is just seeing the ball really well off the Fairfield prep sticks. McGuckin transitioning it. Doriso spinning around. Dumps it off to Barnett. Barry's out of his crease, and the shot goes just high. The risky play from Matt Barry. He was in no man's land, leaving his goal exposed. But Darian not able to convert. An unfortunate sequence of events there. It was unfortunate that Barnett was unable to hold on to that pass. It was a little low. There and he scores! Like a magician, Brady Pacorny just dumping that one in and past Barry. You never know where he's going with that shot. And Brady Pacorny scores his second of the night. Just watch this. Absolute masterpiece from Brady Pacorny. Fools out everybody. Yeah, he was able just to use his speed and a little bit of his body there to get around his defender, and he had a quick turnaround shot. Jack Silsby, Ryan Backus back at the faceoff X. 9.19 left to play. Ryan Backus has done a great job on faceoffs today. Not great in the second quarter, but since then he's been phenomenal. And there's Backus right on cue. Clean faceoff win. Junior Fogo for Fairfield Prep. He'll trot off. Win the faceoff, get off. Can't get any much better than Fairfield than Ryan Backus right there on that possession. Now he transitions in it to Luke Shanahan in the prep offense. At X. There's a little. Fox, dumping it off behind the net. From the point, stopped by Hagen. Carter Hagen makes another stop. What's new? Scrum along the Fairfield F, they get it across the midway point, Luke Caesar. The waiver lucky that Rupenstein was able to catch that pass as if Prep ha caught that, they would have had a wide open goal because Hagen was all up at the restraining line. Timeout called, eight minutes left to play between Fairfield Prep and Daring Ann. It's a two goal lead in favor of the wave. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on the DAF Media Network. DAF Media is actively seeking financial support. Founded in 2017, DAF Media has quickly become Southwestern Connecticut's source for quality sports, arts, and community programming. If you like what you see on the DAF Media Network, and want to help us continue to deliver high quality broadcasts while teaching lifelong STEM, communication, organization, and leadership skills, please email us at sponsor at dafmedia.org. We are a registered 501c3 organization. Out of the timeout, Darian will have the possession. Two goal lead in favor of the Wave. Darian, they have not lost an opening day game since 2007. And that was when they fell to Georgetown Prep in Maryland. Good ride from Fairfield Prep. 
As for the Jesuits, they, uh, they're they all on different tracks here. Hagen corrals it. Going off to the side, miscommunication. Eventually the long pull of McNamara. Barry coming out far ways from home, trying to play that extra defender. Six thirty-three, no shot clock, so Darien can take their sweet time, but Picorni goes wide. And Picorni went right back to the move he just scored on. Unable to get, get another one though. At first you don't save it, you try again. Is the mentality for Barry on that Picorni shot. Barnett knocked loose. Barry coming out, grabbing the ground ball. Now to McCarthy. Off to the races is Lombardo. Luke Lombardo. Down low, the shot in the goal. Number 11, Maddox Little, just before the crease. And Fairfield Prep has some, has some late life in him. 8-7, our score, and that was Little with the goal. Again, the senior captain's coming up big for the Jesuits. Lombardo credited with the assists, but Maddox Little with the big goal, and it's 8-7. Lombardo's had a bit of a quiet night. He had those two opening penalties, and he just got on, a, on the box score there. If there's one time to score, it's in the final eight minutes, especially in a two-goal game. Ryan Backus wins the faceoff for the Jesuits. And great defense from the long pole of Will Bonner. Bonner being double teamed now. Can't stay with it. Barnett coming to help. The scrum in the middle continues before eventually McGuckin comes away with it. Looks like a piece of McGuckin's helmet came loose. He's going to have to adjust it. I believe the buckle on his uh, chin strap was off, so the ref wanted to make sure he clipped it back on before they resumed the play. Don't want another situation like Lancaster a couple minutes ago and falling to the ground. His helmet came flying off. Nonetheless, five minutes left. Darian controlling a one-goal lead. Good cut to Barnett. He can't get the finishing touch. Picorni can't keep it with it. And possession going to the Jesuits. No flag called. There's and the there's flag. The late offsides. Prep sideline was looking for it, and eventually the penalty will be assess assessed. Offsides against the wave. I think Br Picorni didn't think he was going to slide so far over the line, but uh, due to the rain, I think it gave him a couple extra feet there. Brand new turf field here at Rafferty Stadium. Pouring rain? Definitely interesting to see how that takes it. And now Fairfield Prep will have some life. We'll be on the near wing. Man up for Fairfield Prep for the next 30 seconds. Tyler Fox. Prep looking for the perfect opportunity. Only eight seconds left on the man up. Shot off the post. The 
restart at X. Pass almost soars past Furminder. And we're back to even strength here. Redfield Prep keeping it moving. Under four minutes left. Randolfo. Down low. The shot stopped by Hagen. And grabbed by Lancaster. Great finish from Darian to corral that ball. Yeah, Hagen's had a great job at keeping Darian in this game late. He came up with a huge save there. Push called against the wave, going in favor of Fairfield Prep. Three thirty to play. No shot clock once again in high school Connecticut boys lacrosse. You know, in the prep leagues they do a shot clock, and I'm not sure about other states, but. Here in the Nutmeg State, they don't have to worry about the 90-second shot clock. Timeout taken by Graham Niemi and the Jesuits. 319 to play. Fairfield Prep trailing by one in game one of the 2023 season. We're going to step aside and be right back with more action between the Jesuits and the Wave. This broadcast is produced by DAF Media, a joint venture between the Darianne Foundation and the Darianne Athletic Foundation. The production is staffed by student and adult volunteers from the town of Darianne and southwestern Connecticut. Out of the prep timeouts. Fairfield Prep controlling the ball. Fox. Moving it along to Luke Shanahan. This will be a big goal if Fairfield Prep can convert on it. They're trailing by one. Haven't led since they had the, uh, the scoring run to open the game. Grandolfo. Back to Furminder. Furminder looking to get to the net, pushed away, shoots it, bounces it wide. Hagen dives, but it's going to Darian. So Hagen's dive works. Oh no, the referee's going to give it right back to Fairfield Prep. He signaled both waves on it, though. He signaled Darian, then Fairfield Prep. Nonetheless, the ball stays with the Jesuits. Randolfo. Nice spin move. Grandolfo scores. Peter Grandolfo showing off the moves. 8-8. Eight, eight. We're tied with 224 to play. The Bucknell Bison coming up big for Fairfield Prep. And the comeback is complete for Graham Niemi's squad. Yeah, he was able to get over the top, the over the top of his defender, and he and he got the time and room he wanted, and he took a shot and bared it. The All-SCC first teamer, All-State second teamer, coming up big for Fairfield Prep. And just like that, it's a brand new ball game with 2.24 to play. Face off. Barbara Gallo knocks it to the empty space, wins it. Pass shooting past the long stick of Hendrickson. Lancaster, he scores! Elliot Lancaster falling to the ground, flag is thrown, but Lancaster scores, and the bench is erupting. 
Lancaster with the and one goal there. Exactly what the Wave wanted. Flag is thrown. Maybe an excessive celebration. Referee. I think they might get a late hit here on the Jesuits. Going one way or the other, Jeff Braymeyer trying to plead his case to the refs. They're going to come over and give an official word. But Elliot Lancaster, the junior, picks up his first goal of the season. Had two goals last season, both coming in the postseason. And the Wave are going to be man up. So Fairfield Prep will send a player to the box. Looks like the penalty was on Ryan Buckdis, their Fogo. So they're sending out a new. I don't know. Nobody's taken a knee yet for Fairfield Prep. Not really sure who it's on. Maybe a team penalty? Not really sure. A minute on the man up for Darian is the result. But as Fairfield Prep has shown, they can score when they're man down still. They're going to need to use Matt Berry, their goalie. He's out quite a ways. The long stick of Mayer. Whistle called, timeout to the Fairfield Prep Jesuits. 138 left, 31 seconds left on the man up for Darianne and Cooper. What is the game plan for the Fairfield Prep Jesuits right now? Uh, I would I would assume that the Jesuits are definitely going to try to give the ball to Tyler Fox or Marco Furmender or even find Maddox a little cutting down, cutting down the backside. They've gone to it time and time again, and it's been working, and they've scored eight goals, and they've been coming back with – and they've been coming back. 9-8, to eight, Darianne leads Fairfield Prep. The Jesuits scored three unanswered before Darianne's Elliot Lancaster came the other way, went low on Barry and scored, giving Darianne the lead. But again, 98 seconds left to play. It's anybody's game. Do you think Fairfield Prep is going to look to kill off the penalty at the last 31 seconds, or do you think they go right from the whistle? With a minute 38, I don't think they want to waste that time. I think they're going to try to get off a shot if they can. But uh, definitely not force anything, but definitely take their time on this offensive possession. It's an interesting debate when you look at Fairfield Prep. They're playing a player down for the next 31 seconds. But yet again, they don't have 31 seconds, to your point, to kill, essentially. So they do need to somewhat go playing shorthanded after the team penalty. And for Darianne, you know you're going to see another shot or two. The wind and the rain coming down in your faces. But this is the time that Darianne needs to buckle up and get ready for the Fairfield Prep Jesuits. Because the first win for one of these teams is on the line at Rafferty Stadium. One minute, 38 seconds left. Darianne, the man up. And Fairfield Prep slowly icing that clock. Maddox Little serving the time in the box. They're going to want him back. So Fairfield Prep will kill off the time. Just looking at that scoreboard, 13 seconds on the man down. And this is where you... The coaching makes the difference. The sixth-year head coach, Graham Niemi, for Fairfield Prep, former Maryland Terrapin lacrosse player, Little Freed. It's go time now for Fairfield Prep. Fox to the open man. Under a minute left. Can Fairfield Prep get the late heroics? Furminder to Fox. The shot off the post. And that is going out but staying with Fairfield Prep. Restart for the Jesuits, 45 seconds. Furminder to Fox. This is where heroes are made, folks. Fox again, 30 seconds. Furminder, stopped by Hagen. Carter Hagen making the save of the game right there. And Darian just has 20 seconds to kill. The press from Fairfield Prep. Can they intercept it? Rupenstein catches it. 10 seconds left. Darian takes it into the box. Pacorny. Wide open cage. And he will run the clock out. Darian will survive. Fairfield Prep. Short 1-0. And Carter Hagen. The player to thank. 
What a night from the Darien Jr. Making stop after stop, making the save of the game with 30 seconds left. Prep took the shot. Little or Hagen put the big spoon up, made the stop, and led Darien to this 9-8 victory. What a way to open the 2023 season. Yeah, Furmander had a great look at the end of the game, but it, Hagen came up clutch and made a phenomenal save and kept Darien to keep that one goal lead, and it ended with a victory for the Wave. The four-star UPenn commit All-American Marco Furmander got the ball. 30 seconds left. Hagen stepped up to the plate, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Furmander, made the stop, and gave Darien the victory. Truly a great way to start for Dreff Braemeyer's squad. A great way to start his 40th season at the helm of Darien Lacrosse and the Blue Wave are 1-0 after one game. Rain's going to continue to come down, and uh, I'm going to give one final shout-out to our DAF Media Production crew doing a great job bringing you all the sights and sounds in this one from Rafferty Stadium. Thomas Aponte, Liam Tomaszewski, Andrew Lee, Will Donnelly, Owen Gluck, and our DAF Media Advisor. Damian Andrew. I want to thank Zach Dayton and the entire Fairfield University athletic staff for their hospitality of our entire crew tonight, letting us into the beautiful Rafferty Stadium and streaming this game. So for our entire production crew, our advisor, Damian Andrew, my broadcast partner, Cooper Puff, saying so long from Rafferty Stadium. I've been Braden Shank, and this has been a production of the DAF Media Network. Once again, daring in your victors by the final score of 9-8 to over the Fairfield Prep Jesuits. Have a great night, and have a great weekend, everybody.